then you can come this way. Uh, oh, all right, no, it's fine, you well, can go. Uh, as a politician myself, uh, Chimizi has given me a, a topic to speak about uh, the importance of networking between political leaders and business, uh, uh, business organization, business leaders, and so on and so forth. Uh, well, I'll, 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 I'll speak much about us as politicians, how important it is for us to network. But before I get into this topic, I want to share with you a, a story or a, 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 a comment that was made by a certain business person that came over to South Africa for the first time and then went back to his country and then in a public platform he began to tell us that South Africa is a very unsafe country to visit. He said South Africa is very unsafe. He said I stayed in South Africa for two months as a business person. I was never robbed. I was never marked. I just walked freely in the streets of Sandton and Johannesburg and Cape Town and nothing happened to me. And I visited Mexico for three days. And in these three days, I was marked and robbed twice. <laughs> and the audience were careful to say, but he says that Africa is a very unsafe place to live in. And yet he said none, none of the, 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 the things that happened to him in Mexico when he was marked twice in the four days that he visited. And the, the, the audience they asked him, but why do you to say this? And then he said, in South Africa, let's say South Africa is not a safe place to live. It's not myself. South Africa say South Africa is not a safe place to live. So is the, this is how we as South Africans sell our own bread in our own country out there. It's us that say South Africa is not safe. So as we are networking or speaking to people, we are the ones that are telling them that hey, South Africa is a very unsafe place to live in. And yet, when people come to South Africa, they do not experience any of the life-threatening experiences that they would experience in other countries. So, as we are seated here, I wonder what brand or what 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 brand of South Africa are we selling out there? Because part of networking and engage, you need to engage with, with the person that you are networking with, and in doing so. What are you are you selling to the person? What brand of South what is the South African brand that you are you are, you are you are selling out there? I've heard the president will be traveling to Australia and others in the, in the audience will be traveling elsewhere. I hope you are going to sell our brand correctly and say South Africa is a very safe place to live. In. <laughs> when you come to South Africa, you will never experience any of this. Uh, uh, life-threatening uh, things that might happen to you if you, if you go to Mexico, you know. 
But then, as we get into our, into, into our discussions, you will understand the degree in which business and political leaders and the broader society find convergence on how to deal with national and national challenges determines to a large extent the prospects of success of any uh, chosen intervention. Business and political leaders are not expected to find convergence at, at all times, but at least they need to understand each other point of view and in, in, in whatever they are trying to, 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 to lobby each other in doing. With networking, leaders will at the very least proceed knowing what the other party feels and thinks about the, the, the other party's planned action. Uh, those that know better will say that you cannot manage what you do not know. So networking is part of a tried and tested tool to understand the issues better. Managing the interdependence between political and business leaders is an important ingredient in shaping the future of any society. Of course, it does not end there. Other stakeholders, like society, has to be brought in if you are to, have to shape the ideological construct of a national policy in general and in the economic policy architecture in particular. So the philosophy that those whose actions impact negatively or positively on political leaders and business leaders need to be engaged confirms the importance that networking with any with which may graduate to social dialogue depends on the issues that are at hand. Business and political leaders and people network in various forms and it is all about obtaining clarity on context and creating space to influence and shape and envisage outcome. Uh, in South Africa we have a body called the National Economic Development and Labor Council which is called the NEDLA. Uh, I, I don't know if sometimes you hear they, they tell you the network process, the network process, uh, business, government, and labor are still caught up in network. Uh, they are still trying to, because in network, they need to convince each other, they need to buy in, and they need to have a consensus. Some of you, as young people, know that the process of the youth wage subsidy uh, and now the youth wage incentive was a negotiated uh, settlement at Nadia. Most of the policies or economic policies of the country need to go via the Nadia process before they go to Parliament. Uh, now, I would know better because uh, most of Nadia resides within the Department of Labor. Now, most of l l laws in the country, before uh, Parliament or government can introduce any new legislation, amend the legislation, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's, it's, it's desirable that they go through that process, the network process, because that process says business will come in and say, this, this is our fear on this current, on this legislation that is being introduced. And government will come in and say, okay, we see it in this direction. Civil society will come in and say, we see this, we see this legislation as impacting this and this uh, on the people in general. So at NetLeg, that's where they, 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 there's a give and take. They bargain at NetLeg. So policy or legislation gets hammered at, Le at NetLeg before it comes to, to parliament. When it does not say that Parliament would take all the recommendations that are brought from, from that negotiated settlement at Nedlin, uh, Parliament can still have its own outcome on a piece of legislation. But that does not also stop business from also going in and, and lobbying parliamentarians to say, in this legislation, uh, we want to see it's this way. So we are lobbying you to say when the parliament process uh, takes its form and deliberate on the, on the, on the bill, please consider one to 
2 and 3, consider these submissions from us. Because we know that uh, Parliament would never make laws without calling in public participation. And that public participation is, in a way, a network, or is, in a way, a getting the views of other sectors of society on a piece of legislation that would impact on the life. Because we know Parliament does not make laws just to, to live in the corners and the corridors of Parliament. Those, those legislations and those laws that are made in Parliament must be implemented and they are going to impact all of, they impact all of us as, as, as people, as society. So in, 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 in that form, NEDLEC becomes the, the critical body in the country that says all these stakeholders, business, labor, and, and, and government, and, and civil society come in and they have their bite and they have their take in shaping policy so that at the end of the day you minimize contradictions and you minimize a, a issue that can come in and, and, and play a, in the main when the, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the legislation is out, out there to be implemented. In the 21st century, most of the political and business leaders agree that the views of citizens are key in shaping decisions that are sustainable. They agree that also eliminate unnecessary court challenges that always often follows unpopular decisions. There is a universal agreement that the absence of some degree of convergence, at least at a high level among business and political leaders, represents a huge, huge risk to an all-inclusive growth and development of any society. We are witnessing protests, actions by communities in places where we could never imagine. Who ever thought that the biggest economy in the world and the biggest advocate for free market system would run to government for help when their modicum is that government has no business in business? Who would have thought that they would, they would want government to pay them out to bail business out because we know that in the global global meltdown, if business wanted government to, to bail them out, if business wanted uh, the government to come in and rescue the financial sector that was sinking in debts. But they are free to say let the markets flow freely. Government has no business in business. But at, at the end of the day, government which is led by political leaders, they want them to come in and, and rescue them. The big uh, business that imploded during the 2008-09 global, global economic crisis, those, those that were rescued relied on their ability to network with policymakers for this success. Without that effective networking capacity, those businesses would not have been assured of success in their applications for assistance. Networking between business and political leaders have come that has become much stronger and institutionalized globally. It is also argued that the various institutions of the United Nations have become the highly sought after networking platform for leaders. There are very few business and political leaders who do not want to influence the global agenda, and it is often achieved through issue-based issue networking sessions. The World Economic Forum, based in Geneva, has become the most sought after networking business space for business and political leaders. It's described, it's, it describes itself as an independent international organization committed to improving the state of the world by engaging business, political, academic, and other leaders of society to shape the global, regional, and industrial agendas. The forum is, based, is known for its annual winter a meeting in Davos. The meeting brings together some 2,500 top business leaders, international political leaders, selected intellectuals and journalists for a winter meeting to discuss the most pressing issues facing the world, including health and the environment. It's been described as the most elite networking opportunity in the world, where you wrap shoulders 
with uh, presidents, prime ministers, CEOs, you know, the UN Secretary General. Every leader who is serious about ensuring that his or her country benefits from globalization would want to network with the leaders in Davos. This, become, this has become the most, so, so important that most countries pay huge sums of money to secure space. No matter how small the network, they always want to showcase. It, it's, it's not cheap going to Davos. It has been re 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 reported by the Times, the New York Times, that it cost about 70,000 US dollars. Now multiply that to South African <laughs> how much is it, How much is it to, to secure space at Davos? And that, that's a network. A, a, a winter meeting. A, it shows, it tells us the power a, that, is with, that is in networking. And what networking between business, political leaders can do in shaping the future of the globe and in our small space. I was listening to, 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 to the CEO of governance. Uh, friend, he was as as he was speaking, his, he referred to me and said, maybe as a parliamentarian, we could have a buy-in and and see how we take the governance to the next level. And in doing so, you can we can we can never take the governance to the next level without lobbying and networking. Amen. So this shows the power that's. That, that's in networking and, and lobbying. Because as we speak, it says we are connecting universities to, to communities. You, you need different departments that can have a buy-in. You need the Department of Higher Education to come in. You need communications led by a comprehensive department. You also need other departments to, to see the need to, co to, to, to connect universities with, with communities. And doing this, you would need to lobby about three or four different ministers. And to lobby those ministers, you need to network with them, sell the idea, sit down, have tea, be it formally or informally so, but you need to, to, to network. So that's the power that's there in, in, in when you network. There are some people that have said that uh, uh, you need these days you 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 only have information because you know who has the information or you are speaking to the person that has the information. So we see people brag on, on Facebook and Twitter and everything when they are with ministers and with, the, with celebrities, they, they take pictures and, and they tell the entire world that uh, uh, they, they, are, they are with these people. And if you can look at it in the networking business, you would know that these people, as they are sitting together, this person has information on where the person is and what they are doing. So definitely you will only have information if you are with the relevant and the correct person who you can share and sell the ideas that you have. Networking also ensures that political and business leaders have some idea of who has a stake, be it positive or negative, on critical issues. Who is most affected by the problems or issues affecting the country and the, extent, and the extensions to citizens of the country? Who is connected and who may have different views? Uh, who is best able to help solve problems or resolve issues? Networking is also part of, of an effective tool to probe pu public perception. Through networking, you could establish with a high degree of certainty. What do the stakeholder know, feel, want, believe, and value in relation to their problem or issue at hand? What are the threats, risks, costs, benefits for the stakeholder? Who are the community opinion leaders for groups 
within with within the stakeholder network. You know, it's it's it's, it's this also assists you know in the if, if students today were to say they they are they want to have a, a protest or a demonstration, who's leading? You know, who's actually in the forefront? Chimas. Yeah, he's, he's, he's the ring leader. <laughs> and in communities, you actually network and get to those that are calling for protest or those that want to uh, be ungovernable, you know, <laughs> to, to understand what are their serious concerns. And in doing so, before you can go and, and extinguish the fire that is there, you need to lobby the ring leaders, you need to understand who, what's their real, real concern and how you can address those, those concerns. And that can only be done through dialogue. And that dialogue is by, by engaging and getting a buy-in. And that engagement and getting a buy-in, that's the, that's the network and, and, and the lobbying that we are talking about. What are the areas of common grounds and benefits for various stakeholders? What roles do you want stakeholders to play? And, the, and what type of involvement can stakeholders uh, have uh, in, in any initiative? It is therefore argued that networking has become part and the way of doing things around the globe. Without networking, citizens, including corporate citizens, will find it difficult to influence the direction and the architecture of policy, be it macro or micro. The global challenges are huge for any, any one stakeholder to deal with them alone. For this reason, business and political leaders tend to work together in finding interventions. Networking has become the means to lobby, solicit idea, ideas to deal with our daily challenges be it in the political space or in the business environment. I am told that what you know is determined by who you know. Yeah. Yeah. Networking is a powerful tool and you don't, you, you, do, you don't have to look further than the social media network and the incredible power that it wields. Networking with business and political leaders is therefore extremely critical and that it, it shapes our lives, you know. When business and government have a buy-in, things happen. What business and political leaders do impacts us directly. They, their actions set the price of bread and all other basic necessities. Uh, this is not a trivial matter as history has it that the French Revolution was triggered by the rise of the price of bread. Some, if you go to your history. Therefore, there is no excuse why if we want to shape the, the thoughts of business and political leaders, why we as communities, as people, we can't network and lobby. And as I conclude, I want to say, as parliamentarians or as legislators ourselves, there's no legislation that we can say we will pass or we will advocate if it does not have the buy-in of the people. And that the buy-in of the people is through public participation. And public participation is networking and speaking and lobbying and being in dialogue with the people that you are actually crafting the legislation for. So when we speak about a, a parliament of the people, by the people, for the people, we are actually saying in the true sense that we cannot come up with anything <coughs> unless it is that of the people. Uh, let me take uh, I know most of you uh, uh, who are living in Sasko are comrades. Uh, uh, let me say comrades, friends, uh, uh, you know, young people. As I look at you right now, I remember back then that I was also as young as you are. 
I'm not that old. <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> so I was a young person like yourself. And what has made me the young woman that I am today is the potential and the dreams that you have as a young person growing up in shaping yourself and in wanting to take part in shaping your community, in shaping the country. Because you cannot want to shape the country without shaping the community that you are living in. You cannot say you want to, to, to lead uh, here at, at the campus when you can't even lead in a street committee or in a church group that you belong to back there. <laughs> Back there in the villages. <laughs> so I want to leave you with the words that were spoken by Uman Charlotte McClake when she was addressing the women's uh, uh, congress. When she said, We must live amongst our people. She said, first, of, first and foremost, and I quote, This work that we are doing is not for ourselves. We must live amongst our people. And when we do rise, we must take someone along with us in a close quote. So as young people, as you do rise, remember those that are in your communities. Take them along. Amanda. Okay.